Hey, uh, this is uh, Tim Wheeler from Ash calling. How are you, Tim? Yeah, very well, thanks. How are, how are you doing? I'm, I'm well. Welcome back. Not that you've been anywhere. You stay busy, but I feel like I need to say that any time an artist releases a new record. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah it's good to, be, good to be back in the releasing world of stuff, you know? I saw a picture. Have you been boxing lately? Has this something, been something you've done for a long time, or is this a new oh, thing? Oh, yeah. I do Thai boxing, yeah, Muay Thai. So it's, it's kind of like almost like, it's like boxing both, you know, kicks, knees, elbows, clinch work as well. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty intense. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been doing that for like uh, four years now. Four years. And, yeah, and I've been to like train in Bangkok a couple of times, and that's that's really like next level training out there. Oh, you've been training in Bangkok? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've gone out there to train. Um, I was there for three weeks actually at the start of the year, so I'm kind of fighting fit at the start of this year, feeling good. Is that intimidating at all? You know, being in sort of the culture where everything like that comes from. Uh, it's actually it's just not the Thai style to be intimidating. There, it's actually really welcoming, and the people are so sweet. So. Yeah, you'd kind of think it'd be a bit scary, but um, they're kind of the nicest piece, people ever, so they don't make it like that. Well, yeah, even like the, you know, you're, you're training alongside really like professional fighters who've been doing it all their lives, and you know, they should be terrifying people, but they're actually like, I don't know, very, very sweet. And four years in, I mean, I, I expect that you're pretty decent at it at this point. I'm doing okay, yeah. And now I'm like thinking of taking a bit of Brazilian jiu-jitsu just to like fully round, round the game, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm ready for a fight if anyone wants <laughs> Well, and, and yeah. then staying in shape on tour is, is, is not an easy thing to do. So now oh, that you've got yeah. yourself in that shape, like how do, you, how do you continue that when you're out on the road? Well, I do. I try to bring like uh, Muay Thai pads and, and gloves with me. And I occasionally will get one of the other guys to like hold pads or, you know, and then I'll hold pads for them. We can like smash each other a bit. But it's kind of, it's a bit tricky because, yeah, you only sometimes have a few hours in the afternoon at the venue to, you know, do anything. But I bring like a jump rope and stuff like that as well. So, um, but yeah, and I kinda, it, jumping around on stage does help too. <laughs> so the, uh, the record Islands comes out here, uh, what, in a month or two? And, yeah. Uh, you got the I first think it's single in May. I think, yeah, yeah. yeah, the first single "Buzzkill," which, I mean, it, it this sounds like a pretty straightforward song. It's not like I, I feel like I don't need to dig do too deep to f- read between the lines on the meaning, but I still dare ask, what yeah. was the inspiration here? <laughs> oh yeah, well I guess you know there's so many things can bring you down in a day, and um, I guess yeah, there's sometimes I guess I was thinking about like. There are certain people who, who, whenever they pop up, they just kind of ruin everything for you. So uh, I was thinking about that, really, and I wrote it really quite quickly. You know, it's, it's definitely like a fun song. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but it can, I think a lot of people can relate to it, you know? So um, I think the simplicity works. And this far into a career, you, like, I'd sort of wonder, maybe it never changes, like, you know, is a song easy or difficult to get to, but does it surprise you this far in when a song really still does come that quickly and that easy? Yeah, yeah. I guess sometimes they're the good ones. You know, the, the, like when I did, I first wrote it, I was like, oh, this is this is like a kind of comedy song. I'll just put this in my back pocket and, you know, I'll maybe listen to it every couple of years myself and it'll make me laugh because, you know, it really made me laugh when I wrote it. Um, but then I started playing to people, and people just responded to it straight away, like the other guys in the band, and we started playing it. So, yeah, it's it's really weird. Like, yeah, some songs will take you a really long time to write, and they may not, you know, you might spend a couple of months on them, and they don't really connect with anybody, particularly outside yourself. And then some songs, yeah, you write in like three minutes, and, you know, just, I don't know, they bring a smile to loads of people's face. So it's uh, it's always, a, yeah, a bit of a surprise, really. I don't really know the formula for it. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you have many songs in your back pocket that do you have any songs that you're like you know what I'm never ever going to record this oh yeah yeah definitely yeah I do, I, do, I do quite often write songs as just like a little joke just you know they're really dumb lyrics like uh, I wrote one about like a sex video last week <laughs> things like that so that, yeah I hope no one in the world ever hears but <laughs> I just did it to make myself laugh I mean what you're going to do is make us want to hear it more even if it's I know, a bad yeah. song that's what we want we want to hear uh-huh. it <laughs> uh, yeah and there's definitely like um, I also think of a lot of early recordings you know where we we're like we've got demos going back to when we started the band we were like 12 or 13 years old and stuff like that and oh man yeah I'd kind of die if anyone ever heard them <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of those early I mean you just spent the uh, last couple of years playing 1977 in, in full yeah uh, and speaking of youth, I mean, you look back at that, and I don't know, what do you see? Because, you know, usually when you look back on a younger self, especially, you've got that fire, and, and you're not afraid to take chances, yeah. and there's sort of a, you know, fuck it all uh, attitude yeah. to it anyway. Like, is that all there Absolutely. when you're playing these lives still? Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's kind of a good reminder. I'm always uh, quite impressed with, like, you know, how 
give them a songwriting was for a bunch of them when I was like 18 and 19. And then there's, yeah, there's a couple of songs that I don't want to say which ones, but you know, when we were playing them, I was like, oh yeah, I kind of, well, I have to play this because it's part of the album, but you know, I'd rather like play something a bit more recent sometimes, you know, it definitely brought back a lot of memories, you know, and like memories of making the album. And, you know, I kind of just left school whenever we made that. And it was the first time in like a residential studio, you know, kind of being locked in a place for like two months and having to make an album. So, yeah, it was really, uh, I kind of, I was remembering a lot of that kind of thing and yeah, and big shows from the time. Yeah, all, all that kind of stuff was flashing through my mind while I was on stage. And and you're doing that and you're sort of, you know, in that mindset going back through the old trunk, the old yearbook. Uh, yeah. Does that affect what you're writing? Because, you know, it's it's not easy, it's not hard to uh, to hear something like Buzzkill, you know, and it's you know, very punky yeah. and you think, oh, I wonder if that has anything to do because they were sort of playing that style again for so much oh yeah yeah you're, you're totally right um yeah it kind of it fed put a lot into the last album Coblamo, and then yeah i think it, it kind of got us more into like you know playing all the stuff that we'd be played for years as a free piece rock band and yeah it kind of got us got us back into that mentality and that that you know it's like oh you know it's kind of easy for us to do that and then sometimes i try to avoid doing what's easy in a way you know like just sounding like ourselves you know i try try to get away from that just to find new challenges but there's definitely something really good about just being ourselves sometimes right. not not even trying too hard yeah so like buzzkill is a song for example where we're, we're just not trying hard at all that's just us being ourselves but it's a really like i think the song kind of makes it work so uh yeah and it kind of going back to the simplicity of playing the audio stuff definitely has got us back in that kind of frame of mind. So yeah, so I'm I'm really glad we like revisited it. And you got the undertones on it. We should bring that up, right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. They're big. I, sometimes I, I mention the undertones to Americans, and they don't really seem to know know them. But um, yeah, I guess you know, and they're such legends in Ireland and the UK. Even I'd say anyone like most people who people who really know their UK music and the Irish music should I guess know them. But yeah, they're real heroes of ours, and it was the kind of thing whenever we put out our first demos and like our first singles a lot of people were saying oh you sound really like the undertones but i hadn't actually listened to them that much apart although my first ever song i played was teenage kicks which my cousin taught me how to play on guitar so i guess they were in a way right there from the beginning it's in the but, dna yeah yeah i know yeah i got, got to know them quite a bit over the years and yeah they still tour they're, they're still great it's it's always interesting when you know uh, an artist it's a new artist they come out and and immediately it's like you have to be attached to someone else you yeah, know, that's yeah. right. Yeah, people need to give a kind of reference to, yeah. to people, I guess, to understand it. Yeah, and I, I, and I, I totally get that. And I guess, like, people always said we sound a lot like the undertones and Buzzcocks. Yeah. And I hadn't particularly listened to them, but, you know, I think I kind of got that secondhand through, like, Nirvana, who were, like, big Buzzcocks fans. Mm -hmm. And at some point, you've got, I don't know, you, you decide if you want to try to shake that or not. And yeah, know, I, I don't know if you guys did that on purpose, but especially once you get into, you know, the early 2000s and the sound really somewhat gets away from that, you know, with like, that's true, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think we, yeah, we kind of we changed, yeah, but I think still live, we were still sounding a lot like them, even if in the studio, we were kind of, you know, getting a bit kind of slicker, so, uh, like, yeah, I, you know, I ended up like seeing the Buzzkills live, I'm sorry, Buzzcocks, <laughs> I've got Buzzkill in my head, so I ended up seeing the Buzzcocks live, like, uh, quite a bit down the line, and I was always like, oh man, we, we sound like live, we sound just like them, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they're just they're amazing. So. Yeah. Now, of course, I mean, a lot of fans are hoping, you know, with you doing these albums front to back tour, that uh, speaking of free all angels, that that one's going to happen. Is that is that something in the works later um, down the road? Uh, possibly. Like we we did something around its tenth anniversary, and we, we got Charlotte, our mm -hmm. you know guitarist from the time she came and toured with us. Like so, we did like I think six shows, um, maybe like in 2011, and yeah, it was fun. It might happen again, you know, it is kind of fun to revisit these things, but at the minute I'm kind of like focusing on the, the new stuff, really. And speaking of that, I mean, uh, you've got a plot, as you put it, the quote, plot to release two albums relatively quickly. Is this the first of two? Um, I hope so, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm actually in the studio right now, and I'm, I'm, yeah, it's kind of, it's fun because we've finished one album and it's like up for pre-order, and here I am, like, I'm, I'm working away on some new stuff, so... I don't know. Yeah, I just hope like, so long as like the touring doesn't overwhelm us too soon, we, I could get us one finished kind of soon, maybe. But I don't know. Uh, if if things kind of kick off and get crazy, uh, I could easily get sidetracked. So 
yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to get as much work done as, as possible, you know, in the meantime before things get crazy. That's what I love from a band. That's that's. I think these days that's what I want more than anything. I, and I've been yeah. talking about this a lot lately because, right. you know, if it means that there's less touring but more albums, I think I'll take more albums every time. Right on, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but keep, keep, as long as it's fresh and good, you just keep keep rocking it light, I think. You need to quit wasting time talking to me then. And, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You can always pop in and help me if you want. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I'll be right over. I will. It I need just... hand claps on this track, for him, actually. I would love to help with that. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> Tim, it was really, really awesome uh, talking to you, and, uh, and uh, you know, we'll see you over here when you when you hit the States. Okay, awesome. Can't wait. Thanks so much. All right, take care. All right, cheers, Kyle. Bye. Bye.